the speaker for today, Ms. Nabiha. She will be joining us to share her experience on how to ensure a smooth transition from in-class to online teaching. She'll also share information about our upcoming course, Fundamentals of Online Teaching. Ms. Nabiha holds MA in philosophy with more than nine years experience in teaching and teacher training. She's also a content developer and research writer. Ms. Nabiha has um, a broad experience in teacher education, second language acquisition, curriculum implementation, lesson plan developing, content-based instruction, resource development, and implementation. She has broad experience of working with variety of curriculums at university and international schools in Saudi Arabia and the US. Ms. Tahir possesses uh, strong expertise and hands-on experience of digital tools and softwares. She's working as a teacher trainer and mentoring tutors in developing capabilities on teaching techniques at Teach or Gen. Thanks for being with us today, Ms. Nabiha, and you can take it from here. Thank you, Aza, for your wonderful introduction about me. And hello, everyone, and I hope you all are doing well. Thank you for joining for today's session. And I would like to thank you all my fellow speakers for giving an insightful session, which will help me further expand my today's topic. But before beginning, I would like to um, congratulate the entire teachers and team on their second anniversary. And I wish you uh, a wonderful years of unparalleled success. And I would not miss this opportunity to express my gratitude and I feel honored to be a part of this amazing team. So now I will share my screen. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a bit bad, a sore throat today. <laughs> okay, so um, let me go back to this. Can you all yes. see my screen? Yes, it's okay now. You can see it. Mm -hmm. um, no, just, I'm oh, sorry, I'm, I'm really sorry for this. Uh, no worries at all. See, this is the technology, <laughs> which... Okay, so as the topic says, uh, from in-class to online teaching, replicating real class virtually, as you can see this picture in my screen, definitely you'll be thinking, what do I mean by um, when I say I'm, I'm replicating? Replicating is basically, um, something is going wrong with my, okay, yeah. So the key aspects which I will be talking about in my today's presentation is mirror and in-class setting to a virtual lesson. So uh, undoubtedly, um, online teaching or digital learning is not something which uh, the teachers or the people around the globe are not aware of. This is not a new concept, but yes, it was not much practiced. It was not much appreciated or preferred back in the time until COVID-19 arrived. Uh, after that, it became a very integral part of all the learning process around the globe. So uh, that was when it became a struggle and a challenge for teachers who were not much aware of the technology tools, who were not much aware of how to apply their in-class setting or their face-to-face -face learning techniques into a virtual lesson, which can be applied. So by mirroring, I mean here, is like, for example, when we see in the mirror, we see our own reflection. So similarly, a face-to-face -face classroom strategy or techniques or any kind of activities which are being applied can be applied in an online lesson and you can have, you can achieve the same desired result which you would otherwise achieve in an online setting. This is an uh, it, it, it is a transitional phase. I would not uh, disagree uh, with the fact that it's not a transition. It is a transitional phase, and 
how we can overcome this transitional phase, what strategies can be applied, what techniques, how can you design your lesson, how can you design the agenda for the lesson. And in the end, I will be talking about, I will be introducing our upcoming online teaching course, which will be conducted uh, later uh, this month in October. <clears throat> So to further elaborate my idea of uh, how I can how we can mirror an in-class setting into an online setting, I will show you two videos. Now, in this first video, um, the there's a, there's a teacher. She is probably teaching first or second graders she is teaching in in-class setting and she's talking about sight words now let's first watch the video and then i will tell you what was the reason why i have showed you this video um okay so please do let me know is my uh, can you introduce our five new sight week. yes it's okay the sound is okay langston that can you please confirm um Aza, that is the video visible and is it audible yes yes it is okay perfect so all right guys we're going to introduce our five new sight words for all right guys we're going to introduce our five new sight words for the week who can tell me what a sight word is langston how? That's an example of a sight word. A sight word we remember is a word that we have to memorize because it doesn't follow any particular rules. So we have to memorize it, right? Yeah. Okay, so we have five new sight words for the week. Listen, I'm going to read you the word and I'm going to use it in a sentence. Okay, so listen first. Have your with that from. I'm gonna go back up here to have. I'm gonna use it in a complete sentence. Have, I have a cookie for you. Have, your, this is your letter from Santa. Your, with, I am going with you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um... All right, guys, we're gonna introduce our sentence. Have, I have, a cookie for you. Have your, this is your letter from Santa. Your with, I am going with you to school with that. That is a big cookie that from, this is your letter from mom from. All right. Now that we've used them all in a complete sentence, I want you guys to repeat the words after me. Ready? Listen first. Here we go. Have, have your, your with, with that, that from. from. Very good. All right. Now it's going to be your turn to use the word in a complete sentence. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Langston, can you come point to a word and use it in a complete sentence? Read it. How? You sit in a complete sentence. Have this apple. Okay, have this apple. Very good. Thank you, Langston. You may have a seat. London, will you come point to a word? Read it and give us a, a complete that. sentence. That. Very good. Can you use that in a complete sentence? That is your country. Very Okay. So as you can see in this video that the teacher has a complete uh, strong interaction with the students. She is conveying the meaning. She has a complete eye contact. The students are involved. The students are engaged. And she, what do you think? Can we have this kind of interaction, which is so strong, which is so um, inclusive kind of environment in an online lesson? What do you all think? Yes. Um, okay, so now I will show you the second video. Now, in this video, there is a teacher. He is teaching the same topic, sight words, but he is teaching online. Now, I want you to watch this video very carefully and see how he is actively interacting with the students, just like you do in an in-class setting. 
Oh, yeah. Um, this video, I trimmed it, although Bob still has a problem. Okay. Have four. Nice work, everybody. Okay, so um, today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to ask you to write a word on your whiteboard. Let me zoom out here. I'm going to ask you to write a word that's on this high frequency word practice page. And I'm going to ask you to write it on your whiteboard. You're going to have 30 seconds to write that word on your whiteboard. And then I want you to show it to me. Okay. So you have 30 seconds to write the word on your whiteboard and you can show it to me. Now I'll give you a hint. So for example, I'll say the word, let me show you an example. I'll say the word, uh, write the word two. And I'll say it's a red word. So it's one of these words. Oh, there's the word two right there. Two. T O. Okay. Does that make sense? Thumbs up if that makes sense. All right, cool. Now, since I already did the word two, I'm not going to have you do that again. We're just going to cover it up like that. No point in practicing that word again. Then I'm going to count down from five, four, three. Two, one, we're going to have our board the race, and then we're going to be ready to move on to the next one. Are you ready? Touch your nose if you're ready. All right, give yourself a hug if you're ready. We're ready to go. Okay, the first word I want you to write is the word can, and the word can is an orange word. You have 30 seconds, 30 seconds, and begin. It's one of these orange words. Can. All right, show me your boards. Looks like Journey and Sochi and Ida. You got it right. The word can was right here. C-A-N-C-A-N spells can. I'm going to cover that up. Okay. So now, as you can see in this video, what do you think, what are the two important aspects if you, if you consider this video that this teacher is doing in an online teaching, which created a wonderful uh, interactive uh, online session? What do you think? What two things was he doing, which is, which is like it is necessary for an online lesson to be effective as like a face-to-face -face lesson? What do you think? There's something wrong with my cursor today. Okay, yeah. I can. Okay, setting specific time. What else? What else do you think? He is, okay. Okay, I'm receiving responses. Demo, yes. Yes, Rania. He made it very interactive showing the timer. Okay. Okay. Well, Okay, so wonderful. Um, yes, he is very clear in giving his instruction. First, he gave, he is actually clear instructions. Yes, Rania, well done. So what he what is he doing actually? He has a very controlled environment. He is doing a controlled practice in a way by first uh, working with them, showing them what they have to do, then giving out an example that is called demonstration. And then he had very good instruction check question, which was like, turn your nose, uh, touch your nose if you're ready, show me thumbs up if you're ready. So this is what makes an online lesson interactive, just like a face-to-face -face lesson. But yes, you have to add more effort. You need to have more ideas. Got one more in the chat box. Checking they are ready. Yes, Rania, well done. So this is what is needed in an online lesson. Um, Okay.
I'm sorry, um, today something is going wrong with my MacBook PowerPoint. I don't know. So this is one of the, uh, like, as Ms. Heba mentioned, this is one of the problems in um, online teaching. Okay, so, the, so my idea for the topic is, which leads to our upcoming online teaching course, is re-innovate the electronic teaching concept to enhance the learning and teaching experience simultaneously. So re-innovate means we are familiar with the digital teaching technology. We are familiar with how we have to teach online, what apps are available, what kind of softwares we can use, but we have to reinvent. So as a teacher, you need to be creative. You need to be imaginative to make your lesson more interesting uh, for your students. And there are two most important things which I mentioned already. The first one is clear instructions. If your instructions in your mm, lesson are not clear, the students will not be able to comprehend. They will not be able to perform and you will not be able to achieve the desired outcome which you're looking forward to. And the second thing is advanced teacher-student interaction. In online teaching, your interaction should be more strong. You should have more ideas. Like as you saw that teacher, he is asking them to point their nose, to show them thumbs up. So you can have a very inclusive virtual classroom with advanced kind of interaction. What do I mean by advanced? Like you have to greet them in a very welcoming way in a virtual lesson. You can ask them, how are you? Or you don't jump in to start your lesson immediately. You need to have something like, for example, just like I showed you two videos to get my idea through rather than increasing my teacher talk time, which is called TTT, you must be familiar with this term. It is better to have more student-teacher interaction or student-student interaction. For that, we need or we use visuals, we need we use videos, we use different kind of online activities. So that is the basic thing in online teaching, which can be applied in such a broad way, like as uh, Dr. Robert mentioned that to uh, to have or to do online teaching, you need to learn online technique first, which is very important. Because after that, other, otherwise you're not able to apply it as you should be applying it uh, in, your, in your lesson. So you should have clear instructions, advanced student-teacher interaction by rewarding them. There are different applications. Like, for example, one of them is... Um, it's not, not Kahoot, sorry, it's, it's Class Dojo. That is a wonderful platform for rewarding students. You can greet them, you can show them a video or a picture of your lesson and ask them to, um, to talk about the picture, to talk about the video, get them involved in the lesson. For that, um, I know uh, there are many uh, cultural perspectives in many countries where teachers are um, are not able to turn on their cameras. But as an educationist, and as I, I hope that other my other fellow speakers will agree as well, teachers should turn on their cameras because this gives them a very uh, welcoming environment to the student. Because the teacher, the student, when sees the teacher, even if you are a student yourself, imagine if you're looking at the blank screen. So this doesn't, you know, get the student involved much. So if it's visible for you, you should definitely turn on the cameras because students interact more when they see their teacher on the screen. They are more uh, uh, participating, they enjoy more, they love more to respond to their teacher when they are seeing the teacher on the screen. Uh, so this is one of the most important thing which I believe and to, I know there are many still concerns and apprehensions that how we can have uh, the in-class setting applied into an online setting. So for that, uh, TeacherGen is bringing for you all a course, an online course, which is called Fundamentals of Online Teaching. Uh, let me give you a quick review uh, of this teaching course. Okay, so the course duration is for 10 hours, which will be divided into four days, and each day will be two and a half hour. Uh, the days will be Friday and Saturday, that is October 12, 21st and 22nd, and 28th and 29th of October. The timing is 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., which is according to Saudi Arabia time. It will be delivered online via Zoom, 
And uh, the price of this course, as mentioned, is 92 reals or $24. But it's mentioned here, it is till uh, September 23rd, but in fact, it has been extended till October 6th. So what will you be receiving after uh, joining this course? You will be receiving a certificate of completion, a lifetime access to course material and sessions recordings, live support from certified trainers, a detailed feedback on all assignments and activities. Teachers will, will be, the trainers will be continuously uh, be connected with you. They will give you feedback. They will respond to you. They will assign you different hands-on activities. So what you will be learning, you will be practically applying it through those activities. And a certificate from the American Institute of Applied Education, this is going to be upon request. And for further details, you can contact the management of TeacherGen for this certificate. Here is the link, uh, and I hope the team will share this link with you in the chat box if you want to register for this course. So what are the main goals of this course? Why have we designed this course? We have designed this course to facilitate the teachers who are new to online teaching. So it basically comprises all the categories like the new teachers, the freshly graduated teacher, the teachers who have been into teaching career for like a year or two, and also experienced teachers. Because this was a very sudden uh, shift from a traditional teaching method to an online teaching method, so which was very challenging. And a lot of teachers struggled on how they can apply, how they can design their lesson plan, how they can apply the techniques into an online lesson. So facilitate the teachers who are new to online teaching to overcome the anxiety of applying tech tools in their lesson. Introducing ideas of virtual assessment and reflecting to support teachers who are naive to this method of teaching. How to effectively, effectively apply the lesson plan in digital teaching generated otherwise by an on-site teaching. So for example, if you have a lesson plan which you have prepared for a face-to-face -face lesson. How can you apply the same lesson plan? Definitely, it won't be 100% the same. It will be adaptive. You are going to adapt the lesson into lesson plan for a digital uh, teaching session. <clears throat> okay, so the first part, uh, the first objective, sorry. Okay, so the first uh, uh, course objective, this is the review of all four sessions. So I'm going to give you a quick brief review of all the four sessions. So the first session, in the first session, you will be covering introduction to planning online lessons. So in that, you will be working on uh, lesson, plan, uh, lesson plans for online lessons, lesson plans for face-to-face -face lessons, and lesson plans for, and we will be, sorry, introducing teachers with teaching theories and how you can adapt them, how you can change them to fit for a digital lesson. The second course objective or the, for the second session is creating and engaging online classes. Now, how you can create an online engaging class, you, we will be giving review, a detailed review and introducing to teachers who are new for about Zoom, about Microsoft Teams and Google Classroom. Now, you must be thinking that from the last two years, we all are using Zoom and Microsoft Teams, but still there are so many teachers who are familiar only with the basics of Zoom, who are familiar only with the basics of Microsoft Team. There are still so many things you can explore in Zoom and you can use them. They know about it, but they are reluctant and hesitant. So we are going to help them through this course that how they can apply those things in the Zoom session, how they can apply those things in Microsoft Teams, which is in fact more broader than Zoom, and how they can use Google Classroom for student interaction how students can give feedback to the teacher, how students can give feedback to their own work or their peers for certain assignments. <clears throat> the third session will be about promoting motivation and finding re reliable resources online. So how you can motivate uh, students, how you can encourage them to take part in online session, which is through PowerPoint, Google Slides, and different e-resources. Now, again, you must be thinking that PowerPoint is something you must be familiar with from quite a long time, but there are still many things in PowerPoint which you must have not experimented 
which you must have never applied or you must have not known about them. Like, I'll give you one example. For example, uh, there's a feature in PowerPoint where you can create flipping cards. Now, those flipping cards, usually teachers think, uh, when I mean, I train teachers, they usually think that uh, the flipping cards can only be used for primary or elementary level, but that's wrong. You can use flipping cards for, for level up to university students as well. So this is only the way how you use them, how you apply them. Like you use flipping cards in an actual classroom. So the only difference uh, in an online lesson using flipping cards will be like, for example, if you have a flipping card activity for adjectives, like maybe grade three, four on any level, and you have a picture on one side of the flipping card, like for example, one side of the flipping card is with picture and the, on the other side is the word written in an actual face-to-face -face classroom. So you ask the student to randomly pick any flipping card, see the picture and say the name of the adjective, definitely you will be pre-teaching them before because you cannot um, ask a, great, uh, a third grader to say out the, the adjective without pre-teaching them. So the student says the name and then he turns around and see, oh, my answer is correct. Or if it's wrong, whatever the, the answer of the student is. In PowerPoint, um, the only difference of flipping card is that you have to go in order. Like you have to number the flipping cards, one, two, three, four, and five. You cannot ask the student to randomly pick any number because if you click on any number, all the flipping cards will turn around. Uh, so this is one drawback, but yes, you can have it. You can have it for any English activity, for vocabulary, for grammar, for even for reading activities, for writing activities. Like you can have four flipping cards. And like, for example, if you are teaching advanced English like uh, ESL students and you have to teach them the topic sentence, the, 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 the body of the, the content, the conclusion. So what you can do, you can have all the sentences as flipping cards and you can tell them, guess which one is the conclusion? Which one is the topic sentence? Which one is, is, is the body of the, uh, of the paragraph? So so this is how you can, or which one is the hypothesis, even in advanced um, uh, ESL teaching, you tell them about hypothesis. Critical thinking is basically in writing. So this is how you can use those flipping cards. Also in maths, you can use them for additional, for division, even for word problems, which is actually very good for mental maths. You can have word problems. You can use this for science. You can have a, like, for example, a picture of water cycle, a picture picture of a picture of any other cycle, and you can ask them to quickly guess what's the name. So this is how you adapt your online, oh sorry, in-class thing into an online session using PowerPoint. PowerPoint is very, very broad. We are not even, even I am working on it from so many years, for more than nine years, but still I'm exploring it. Because the, 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 the Microsoft Office also keeps on updating. So they are adding more features. Also the same for Google Slides, which is very good. You can have your presentation prepared on Google Slides. E-resources, now why we are saying re reliable resources? Because every reliable, every source is not reliable. There are sometimes uh, teachers or sometimes people who are uploading uh, like different worksheets and they're also providing answer keys. And I have myself witnessed that some of the worksheets had wrong answers. So we are going to help you find what resources are reliable and uh, one more thing that this course is not going to be only limited for zoom and microsoft team we might be introducing more new applications similar similarly it goes for powerpoint and google slides as well so the last uh, uh, the session four will be about assessment digital assessment digital feedback and how you can digitally reflect on your own work and on the students work now this is very important part of any lesson, whether it's in class, whether it's online, you have to reflect yourself. Also ask the students to reflect on your work. The best way to keep them engaged is to share your thinking, share your thoughts with them, share the lesson objectives, share what you will be covering today in an online lesson. And what do you expect from them to learn? What do you expect from them to, to provide or to generate in the end? So this gives the, the student a lot of space to, to be, to interact, to, to participate 
because they are reluctant, they are hesitant, and it's, it's very natural for them to be uh, hesitant. So you as a teacher, you are, as I always say to my other teachers, that you are the captain of the ship. And if the captain is firm, if the captain is confident, he can sail through the, the ship to the sea, no matter how uh, high the waves are. So you have to be the captain. If you are a good captain, you can sail your students across the uh, sea. And in the end, after this course, inshallah, you will be successful in conducting an online teaching session. Now I will be uh, wrapping up my presentation with the quote, we will have to be flexible and understanding with our students and with ourselves. Because if you are flexible with, first of all, yourself, I believe as a teacher, then you're not flexible in understanding with your students. So remember this and inshallah, you all will be successful. Thank you for listening and being patient for this late hour. Uh, and if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to, uh, to ask me. Okay, thank you, Ms. Nadia, for the informative session. And if you have any questions, please type them in the chat box. And in the chat box, you will find the link to register to the course. So hurry up and enjoy the discount. My You may write your questions. So. Okay. You will get the feedback form soon and also you will get the survey. yes thank you lots of thanks yeah <laughs> Alhamdulillah. okay i think it's time to thank miss nabiha again thank you again miss nabiha welcome, Aza. and thank you teachers in for providing an opportunity to share my thoughts with all of you okay. Thank you. Okay. Now it's time to say goodbye and we'd like to thank you all for joining us tonight. We hope you found today's event of benefit to you. Kindly note that the certificate of attendance for this event will be sent within two or three weeks from today. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn to know about our upcoming events and offers. Thanks again and have a lovely evening. Goodbye.